I take I'll take my lumps on that one. So Aaron, what right. we, we that's uh that's number three for all of us. All right, so we're going on number four. Okay. So we're on the fourth round. Yeah. All right. So this one is just one that I think is is good and all right, so they you know the band Low? Yes. Yep. Yes. Low is great. Low is one of those like bands that like you know, they don't always write the best stuff, but when they do nail it, they really nail it. And this is one of those songs of theirs that like, I just sort of glossed over and didn't pay attention to. And then Mavis got her hands on it. And suddenly it's like something that like, I was like, stop me in my tracks and went, holy shit, this is the best gospel song I've heard in 20 years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just really good. And you know, because because of the gravitas Mavis has, she can deliver it in a way that I don't think anybody else can. It's definitely, she makes the song sing. Now I don't know much, but I can tell when something's wrong. Mm. And something's wrong. Mm. But some holy ghost keeps me Yeah, I I gotta agree. I'm not familiar with the low version, but I, at this point, I don't feel like I need to be because yeah, right. it sounded yeah. like an, an an old gospel song, and I just fell in love with it immediately. So I, yeah. I didn't want to fall out of love by listening to the original version. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is that it sounds like a really skeletal, like like remain like a fossil of a gospel song, where like all the meat's fallen off of it and only the bones are left. Like it, there's yeah. barely anything to it. And, but no, it was like, you know, a couple of like hipsters in a garage, I think in Ohio. <laughs> going, like, <laughs> like oh, let's, let's work this out. Um, and we yeah, we, I mean, you know, they hit pay dirt. They didn't realize it at first. They, they have some really, really great songs. Plastic Cup is one of the best songs of the last 25 years, I'd say too. I'll but, have to check it out. Cause I'm not, I'll, I'll admit I'm not real familiar with a whole lot of low stuff. Yeah, it's it's one of those things like if you just kind of go into it blind, like you you may just hit a bunch of like sort of mushy like nothing. Uh, but if someone guides you, you can you can find some gems in the well. Much like I, the uh, whole episode I just did on swans. God, swans is another one of those things. Like yeah, yeah, sw- I love swans, uh, but yeah, for sure, like. <laughs> Yeah, you, you need a guide, man. I'll t- you need a shaman. Yeah, you really do because that's that's a hard band to understand. It's there's so many pitfalls. I mean, there's some amazing stuff, and some, but some of it's like half an hour long. Yep, yep. See? Michael does not. Uh, he does not abbreviate much. No, and he never anything he's done. He, he's recorded. He's done with as soon as it's recorded. It's it's over. Yep. So it's it's a weird band to to like, but I've actually really gotten into them. So we we just yeah. took a whole tangent on Swan. So, all right, Jason, what, what do you got? Um, my fourth, and by the way, I just went and heard eight seconds of Plastic Cup, and you're right, that's fucking cool. They're, they're good. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do some exploration there. So this is not a recorded song. This was something I stumbled across when Cornell died and there was tributes going on. In my eyes, indisposed, in disguises, no one knows. Eyes of the face lies the snake And the sun in my disgrace And when she played this song, two things. I've heard she's an absolute bitch, so that kind of framed it a bit. Oh, kind she's of, always been nice. Like she's, I met her a couple of times. And she's did you? Yeah my, yeah. my girlfriend works in... Um, TV and radio up here. So she worked for a company that does interviews with her, but I'm sure anyone getting interviewed probably has a hard time with like 
dealing with all the shit around that. So you guys are pretty cool. You're right. We're okay. You know, (laughs) we have our moments. Um, We all have our moments. But when I heard this, um, like I've always, you know, it's a great song to begin with as far as the original goes. It's, it's a fucking classic. And for this to take it in the direction that it went in, it was enough for me to go, man, I wish she would record this properly because I want to hear that. So I don't know if it's better than the original because the original is pretty goddamn good, but there's something about this that was like, wow. There's not often I listen to songs and you get like, you kind of have to push away from the desk for a second going, okay, this is, yeah, this is hitting. Yeah. 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 So she, yeah, th- th- this song, this is a, this is also makes me think of like what I said earlier about Chris Cornell. Cause like I was listening to this stuff. I hadn't heard this before today. I listened yeah. to it on the train coming home or I watched it. Yeah. Uh, and it made me like, remember like, Oh yes. Am I wrong in thinking like this record came out right around the time that like MTV unplugged was like a big deal, like in the shadow of a Nirvana unplugged oh, super unknown. Thing. Yeah. 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 It, and yeah. It was- it, it did. It was right and around I, that time. Yeah. And I feel like that there was an unintended consequence of that where like, and this is where I think I'm getting maybe too deep into, <laughs> I think I know what's going on in Chris Cornell's head. <laughs> um, but it seemed like this song, even when I heard it back then, I was like, oh, he, he this is supposed to be a quiet song, but they're kind of playing it loud on the record because they kind of have to make a big song out of it because they're fucking Soundgarden. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean, right? Like, and they were riding that edge. Like, it kind of starts kind of mellow, and then it goes like big at the end. Yeah, and then I didn't think about it for a long, long time. And then when I heard her cover of it, I was like, "Oh shit, that's right. This is actually a quiet song. Yeah, it's kind of perfectly put together as a quiet song. You don't need to do anything to it. No, and that's what I loved about it. Like, yeah, like her piano. Like right off that top, the intro is like. Oh my God. Like I wish I could have this and not have to go and just, even though I, the live version is pretty awesome. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, I'd like to hear this as an option. Well, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think it's great when an artist takes a song and, and does a complete 180 with it and, and makes it sound. I mean, that sounds like a Nora Jones song. It doesn't sound yeah. like Soundgarden and that's, she made it her own. And, and that's what I like about it. Whether it's better yeah. than the original debatable, but yeah. I do like that. Like Aaron said, it, it, she made it sound like maybe it was supposed to sound in Chris's head. Yeah. So uh, I'm on board with it. Barely, but I'm on board with it. All right. She does a really cool chord change, like choices in her, like the way she arranged it on the piano. Like she, th- she makes yeah. a lot of really cool little like choices for like whatever the hell they would be like. Seven Augmented notes changes. and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's really good at that. Like, she's got a she's got a real ear for that sort of stuff. She's probably a little too clever with that sometimes, but <laughs> it really works in this one. Yeah, I agree. All right, so for my fourth, I'm going to go with Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. God's going to cut you down. Who till that long tongue liar? Who till that midnight rider? Till the rambler, the gambler. Backbiter, tell them God's gonna cut them down. Tell them God's gonna cut them down. Tell them God's gonna cut them down. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. That song, it's an right. old ass song. I mean, it, the first time yes. it was recorded was 46 by the wow. Jubilaires. And it's called God Almighty's Gonna Cut You Down. And a ton yes. of people have done it, including Johnny Cash, Marilyn Manson, uh, Odetta did it on Odetta Sings Ballads and Blues in the 56. And it was recorded under a bunch of different names. Like Elvis Presley recorded it as a song. It's the same song, but it was called um, huh. Run On. But Elvis recorded it. Uh, Tom Jones recorded it. But well, I want to hear the Tom Jones. I, I, I kind of <laughs> like it too. <laughs> but, it's just, <laughs> but it's such a mess. Tom Jones song. does anything, I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, did you guys get a chance to listen to this? Because it's yeah. such a menacing song, and I think 
even more so than the than Marilyn Manson's version, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club really makes it sound wicked. So did Marilyn Manson do it after they did it? Like, when's the order there? Uh, I, I think, think he probably was, did it before. Yeah, I think it, I think it was cl- it was close. I think Manson did it in what seventeen, and I yeah. think and I think Black Rebel Motorcycle Club did it in seventeen also. It was okay. interesting. It was around right. the same time. Because like, I feel like they, you can hear how they would have said, okay, so Marilyn, you did this, and that's kind of cool. But like, if you just did a little bit more of this, it'd be even cooler. Yes. Kind of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like you can hear the relationship there. But yeah, I dug it for sure. Yeah. I like the originals. Be- like, I like the old ones better. I find the old, like, sort of shitty 40s, 30s <laughs> recordings to actually be more menacing because. To me, it's like, no, these oh, are people yeah. that, like, have been drinking, like, you know, shit-tainted water their entire lives. Yeah. Um, and, like, you know, 100 proof booze. Yeah, they all have, yeah. like, they all got fetal alcohol syndrome. Like, yeah. uh, half of their kids <laughs> yeah. have died. Yeah. Like, their People still died of scurvy back then. Like, straight back up. Then, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if God starts talking to you, then uh, everybody else better look out. <laughs> So like, <laughs> that's the shit that's actually scary to me. Like the fucking like Brian from like Akron and fishnets is not going to scare me. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, care yeah, how yeah. many distortion pedals he's got. It's not scary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always found that the case with, with Marilyn Manson is that it, it was, it just seemed to be too put on to be. I always yeah. found it hilarious. Like I, you know, like I took it as like high camp kind of like drag sort of stuff. Like, yeah. and I went through like a very, yes, I did my goth time and I did my time in the goth mines. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, like I always found him to be like really, really kind of just fun. Like it, it just all seemed like just a big, stupid, goofy party to me. It was, had more to do with like, Rocky Horror than it did with like the Church of Satan. See, and I think, yes, yes. I, yeah, and I, I, it, I didn't realize that until way later, and yeah. it made more sense to me later. So, may, I, I didn't get it at that at the time it was current. So, right. So, all right. So we got a, it's kind of a split decision on that one. So we did a bonus round of of uh, for a fifth pick. So. Yeah. Aaron, what did you pick for your fifth track? Uh, I'm trying to decide. Like, I had two that were lined up, but I think if I'm going to go with, like, a cover that totally recontextualizes the original one, it's got to be Devo's Satisfaction, man. That, that, that's that's, that was an awesome pick. Like that when just you, flips it, man. Like yeah. that just flips the whole thing on its ass and like slaps it around and makes it completely the opposite of what it was. And yeah, I love it. Absolutely. And it's great. Yeah. It's what maybe one of the best covers of all time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love and that I, version. You don't see much of that anymore these days. Like I remember seeing no. it yeah, like that one kind of felt I don't know, maybe because like most of those Devo guys are still alive, like maybe. I don't know. I mean uh-huh. Devo yeah. doesn't get the respect that it should. I think no, like, kind of they don't. Over a little bit. Well, because Mark Mothersbaugh ended up, you know, doing music for cartoons, and I think maybe that was had a little effect. He dadded. Yeah. He musically dadded. He publicly yeah, exactly. dadded. Yeah, exactly. He started doing the Rugrats <laughs> and shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will fight you. The stuff that he did for Pee Wee's Playhouse is like fucking gold. Oh, gold. Pee Wee's yeah. Playhouse is amazing. <laughs> Everything yes. about Pee Wee's Playhouse was amazing. Cowboy yeah. Curtis, oh my god, Cherry the Chair or something that was, was incredible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the, the hell fact, I remember this shit. The fact that that existed, man. Like you'll never see a show like that again. Like, no. yeah, you <laughs> want to do yourself a favor? Like he did a Christmas special. Pee Wee did a Christmas special in 1988 or something like that. Oh god. 
when he was like at the height of his powers and he could get any celebrity that he wanted to come on his Christmas special. And he just oh, fills it with the most ridiculous ass cameos <laughs> of all time. <laughs> like, and just out of nowhere, it'd be like, everybody, it's like Grace Jones. And like suddenly, <laughs> <you're there. laughs> what? And then the Rubio triplets come out. And oh I mean, it's, it's completely insane. How watch it's anything where she makes, insane. where Grace Jones makes a cameo. It's insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that that one's indisputable. All right, so Jason, what do you what do you have for your bonus? Um, I went with um, Jawbox's version of Cornflake Girl uh, being better than the Tori Amos version. I'll go with that. I, I forgot about that song. Things are getting kind of gross And I go at sleepy time This is not This is not really happening Yeah, yeah that, that was that was off yeah. her first album or so, right? I think that was yeah, off her first yeah. album Good I, song, good song Good song I never really got into that first album So anybody, you know, making it heavier To me was, was probably making it better yeah. Well, and it was, yeah. And that's, I'm a big, uh, there's obviously all my picks are from a very similar genre and very similar dynamic as far as loud rocking stuff, which at the end of it all was just like, man, like you're just, <laughs> come on. That's not cool. They're not going to think I'm cool. So, okay. <laughs> but at the same time, I do remember that when I first heard it back in like late mid nineties and I was just like, this is awesome and yeah. it really kind of gave it its own thing and, but it didn't have to heavy it up so much that it's like okay it's awesome because it's heavy it's like it's just heavier yeah version of a good song kind of thing it's the opposite which I like she better. did with smells like teen spirit yeah exactly i didn't care for that at all yeah i never well, liked smells like teen spirit to begin with i always thought yeah. that was one of their weaker songs but yeah, like I do remember that. Like you're reminding me. Like I remember when Tori Amos like kind of broke, and yeah. I was sort of like, "Oh wait a minute, someone's actually doing something that's like kind of cool with a piano." Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I listened to that record several times. I can't. Re- I don't remember much about it now, but it's one of those things that, like, if I listen back to it, I wonder what I would think of it. But yeah, I do. Yeah. I do vaguely remember that song now, and it's like I remember really going like, "Oh." this is not like just pop sort of stuff, but like really respecting her and going like, okay, she's a big deal. Yeah. Like, she's got some, she's got something going on. That's a big deal. And I'll so. be honest. I, I didn't, I don't know. I, I didn't pay Maybe even pay attention to the lyrics. as <clears throat> particularly on that song until <laughs> you sent me the link to Jawbox's version and they're amazing. So maybe, maybe yeah. I should go back and listen to that album again. It's only been 30 years or something like that. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. It's out there waiting to happen. <laughs> All right. Hey, so, have you, you, yeah. know, you made me think of something, actually, when you brought up the Nirvana thing. I know this isn't part of our podcast. But we don't have any structure. In your so. quiet moments, kind of considered just how is Nirvana actually aging when you oh, listen yeah. to their music? It's like you don't ever want to speak ill of it, but... I don't know what it is, but it's probably just me. But there's something about where it's like, eh. No, I get it. I I get it. I mean, there's some songs that I I like. But... There are, but you know how like when we listen to old music and how we're talking about like just historically speaking in a uh, sort of larger existential sense of like, okay, well, I can love something from the 40s, 50s, 60s. Like, there's certain songs that stick or certain bands or certain pieces of music. And you always kind of assume Nirvana would be a part of that. And yeah. they are. But then it's like when I put the, hold them up to the light of that same sort of context of like different decades and genres and stuff, it's like, all right, 
is, is that the best I can grab from the nineties? Is that really it? Yeah. It sticks out a little bit. I mean, but I think part of that is also the fact that like, I think a lot of Nirvana's best songs were not the ones that became the radio hits. I agree with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they yes. always had like their better songs were, and I wonder if it's something that they kind of just did misanthropically, like on purpose, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, you want to yeah. hit? Here's this shitty. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. There's your on the radio. Yeah. 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 You know what well, I mean? That, and they were the ones they liked for their fans. Well, know? that's exactly so. why they wrote the song Rape Me. It's the, the same chords to yeah. Smells Like Teen Spirit, yeah. just backwards. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They did that yeah. on purpose. But, you know, even back in the early, mid-90s. That's not aging well. <laughs> no, that's not. That, that's a song title you can't really, uh, you can't really have on an album nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so, but even back then when they when everyone was alive, I they weren't my favorite band at all. I was more if no. you're going to take the like the the Mount Rushmore no, of Seattle, I, I was more Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains kind of guy than Nirvana. It's tough because I got I got swept up in it just because I was living in Vancouver during that period of time, like right in that like ninety through ninety four phase. So uh, by proxy, I was there. Like I dig it, and if anything, what's happened to me as I've entered my forties and going to my fifties, oddly enough, the band that I really wasn't on board with for the whole time, I've actually gotten into over the last like year, which was Alice in Chains. Like I was never really into Alice in Chains, but now I've kind of listened to their catalog and to the non hits. And it's like, Holy shit. There's some good, like it's a thing in the sense of like, it's heavy and it's unrelenting, but there's some really interesting melodies within all of it. Kind oh, of thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he was really good at that double harmony thing. With yeah. Soccer. But even like his melodies counter to the guitar lines. And it's like, yeah. when I hear that, it makes me listen back to like Nirvana. I think that's what I've done is I've gone back and kind of done a deep dive back into grunge and be like, okay, what, you know, is worth a shit to me at this point in time. And as that sounds really arrogant to say, I'm sorry. It was like um, baklava without all the honey. Yeah. But it's like, all of a sudden it's like things that I wasn't really into all of a sudden. Now it's like, you know what I'm into is like screaming trees and I'm into like Alice yeah. and Jane kind of thing. When at the time I wasn't, well, maybe you can answer this. Cause I didn't live there at the time I was in Ohio, but like, uh, it seemed like to me then, and then in the time subsequent to it, and it seems like that's changing now as like, you know, as grunge is played on the oldie station yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because it is yeah. uh, uh, that at the time I remember like hearing Alice in Chains and kind of going like, well, okay. So there's like the Pearl Jam for like, you know, the, the, the dude bro -y bro, there's kind yeah. of more bro, like sort of a little more mainstream bro -y. And then Nirvana for guys who are like just a little bit more like sour and misanthropic. Yep. And then, uh, screaming cheese, if you were a little bit older and you knew what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> yep. Um, and, uh, Melvin's, if you were a true underground, like weirdo, yeah. um, and Tad. Yeah, oh, yeah, God, and, yeah, and then and then Alice in Chains. If you smoked meth and cut down trees for a living, oh yeah, that, that's, that's right? like Iron Man's right. made of coke. Yeah. Alice in Chains made of meth. Yeah, <laughs> and but like so like the Alice in Chains heads were always like a little scarier than the other yeah. ones, you know, because they're still metalheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, they were total was, metal. Like yeah, exactly. they had the metalhead guys. And they were angry because they knew they were a dying breed as far as like metalheads go, like where it's like, yeah. you know, we know that metal's on the way out and this is the last bastion of what we have. And I think that was the problem is because Jane's addiction and Alice in Chains kind of came like a year before it all broke. Yeah. In a lot of ways, they're not recognizing the fact that they kind of paved, they opened the door a bit for the other yeah. bands to just bum rush through kind of thing. Yeah. And as a result, they get kind of stuck with a little bit of that metal stigma. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Although Jane's Addiction has that like San Francisco hippie thing going on. I think the like, jam well. band kind of like yeah, fish kind of yeah. thing going on. Yeah. And with like, and I don't know how much of this is in the music. Eh, a little bit, like a little bit of like the whole like gypsy punk. Yeah. Going on as yeah. well. A little um, bit like a drum circle could break at any point. Yeah. Song. yeah. There's a violinist on call. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I really think Alice in Chains is aging a lot better than a lot it of It really is. is. Right? I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's because it's, it's because of the melodies. That's yeah. the thing. I think that's the trick. Like if you want a song to last a long time, melody. 
Do you know what it is? Do you guys ever watch the channel called Lost in Vegas on YouTube? No. no. So it's two guys. You know the band Lost in Vegas. No, it's two guys that are in Vegas, and they're two hip hop rap guys. And oh, what wait, they yes. do I have is they this. listen to like stuff that's well that they didn't grow up with, and they get they film their reaction. And like, there's a lot of people doing this now, but this is one of the pioneer, and it looks a lot more pro. Yes, but they. And these are guys that like admit it's just like really listening to it and he'll pause it and he'll go, what the fuck, bro, bro. Like kind of like that, but a little less annoying like that. It's two dudes that actually kind of analyze what's happening within the music okay. and stuff and understand like they've gone so far down the Alice in Chains rabbit hole and the rush <laughs> rabbit hole. And just yeah. watching their reaction, it's so honest. It's like you uh, really, uh, you're not, you're not hamming it up for the camera. You're like, holy fuck. This yeah. is 2112. It's really cool. I watched for this. I, I got into them uh, when they did a Devin oh, Townsend a reaction. Yeah, yeah, it really got me into it. It's like, oh my God. And now they've gotten to the point where they understand Prague and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, they can speak to it a bit better. Like, it's not, still not like, obviously not, not their forte, but, you know, they appreciate it. And they really got into Alice in Chains. Like, they did one recently on them bones. And I was just like, look at you guys. You just fucking love this. You yeah. it for the first time and just yeah. love it. <laughs> I have seen that. Yes. Yeah. I got, yeah. I got to check this out. Oh, it's, it's worth it's cool 15 movie. minutes of your time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So we got you, both of you had your bonus ones. So mine is, uh, our lady peace doing Lana Del Rey's summertime sadness. Who doesn't like Lana Del Rey? I'm feeling electric tonight Cruising down the coast going about 99 Got my bad baby by my heavenly side Know if I go to happy tonight Oh my God, I feel it in the air Telling for wires above My sizzling like a snare Honey, I'm on fire I feel it everywhere Nothing scares me anymore I absolutely love their version. I'm not a big Lana Del Rey fan at all. And so maybe that's one reason why I think this is better than the original. But I also think it's kind of neat. When- Here's Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like it when, when, you know, they sing a song not written for their for your gender. I always think that's kind of interesting, too. Yeah. Speaking um, of, well, yeah, like Jolene, like White Stripes Jolene. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that until you just oh, mentioned it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. It is good. I had forgotten about that. Oh, damn it. Okay. So, speaking of White Stripes, did you, did you guys ever hear the uh, their cover of The Party of Special Things to Do? No. Oh, no. my God. The White Stripes doing that is amazing. I probably should have put really? that on, on this list. See, and that's what we think. We, there's so many things you could put on this list. Like, I think I sent you guys a link to uh, my buddy Morgan doing. Um, uh, what the hell? The Unholy Trio. It's the version of um, Bring the Noise. Yes. Well, that's awesome. That yeah. was my favorite thing out of all of that- them. I was like, oh, <laughs> hell yes. <laughs> I, I, I listened to that one twice. And I was like, this makes me just fucking happy right now. I was yeah, like, it was so <laughs> awesome. That's my buddy Morgan Gear. He's uh, his. He is basically the band Drunken Prayer, but he also plays guitar for the band Freakwater. How low can you go? Death row. What a brother know. Once again, back is the incredible. Animal. The incredible. The public enemy. Number one. Five bulls that freeze and I got numb. And I tell them that I never really had a gun. It's a wax of the Terminator X fun. Turn it up. Bring the noise. Yeah, like, that, that was, that was, yeah, that, that, I heard that and I was like, oh, okay. He, this is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he did that one a, a long time ago. And it's funny because, um, oh, what the hell yeah. with that, that record label that's, um, what's well, Bloodshot, right? Bloodshot, like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He was, he was, uh, doing stuff for them and they're like, hey, they heard it and they're like, hey, do you, you mind if we put this on a compilation? <laughs> and he's yeah. like, uh, oh, uh, okay, I don't have anything else to give you for a compilation. So yeah, go ahead. So he didn't think anything of it. And then like a year later, 
Chuck D sends him an email, says, hey, can you send me a file of that? Because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you, is this really Chuck D? <laughs> You, you should be. Like, <laughs> no, I really want it. Please, it, it like, I, I don't know why. Ch- Ch- I, it, this is not fair, but I think Chuck D should just only ever send voicemails. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Like, they should never write anything. They should always just, there's a Chuck D, I need to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck D doesn't text. He never yeah, he texts. Text. No he email, no text. I am. Only he's, he's old school. Here. It has to be yeah. vocal. Yeah. Something vocal. Yeah. Yeah. You just get a wave file from them and you have to like listen to it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's his taxes. He's reading them to you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that would be a whole podcast in and of itself. Like you just do a whole thing of just oh, yeah. Chuck D reading stuff. I'm telling you, man, like there's some people that you, I'd listen to and read a phone. Oh, book. okay. So that, know, he's one of them. Oh yeah. That brings me to an idea and, and I'm going to be giving this away on this podcast now, but I had an idea of doing another podcast of, in the style of an old time radio show, but just reading really bad sci-fi erotica. Oh man. But I need other yeah. voices for it. Chuck D would be perfect for that. Oh my God. Chuck D. Yeah. Well, I don't Chuck know if D. I, I don't know if I could get him the to do gold it. standard in reading science fiction. <laughs> erotica. <laughs> erotica. <laughs> so if you guys are in, you know, let me know. I'll shoot you some, uh, really bad novels and, uh, we'll do some, uh, Listen, Step when the drafts were on tour, when drafts were touring, there was a period of time. I don't know if you can still do this, but I think they still do it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait good stories Barrel. always end. Oh, always start with that. I don't know if you can still do this. But. Right, all right. <laughs> so Cracker Barrel back then <clears throat> would have like these like, you know, tape trade stations where you could like stop at one Cracker Barrel, grab two or three cassettes. They were invariably like christian like fiction books on cassette you know what i mean yeah yeah. like terrible as shit so we would grab them and like sometimes we'd listen to them sometimes we wouldn't but one of the things that we would always do is we would go to like pawn shops and thrift stores and look (laughs) for uh star trek books on tape oh Oh, yeah yeah, and then swap them into the christian jackets and return them (laughs) at the next uh cracker barrel oh that's good It, it felt really good. That's and we awesome. listened to a lot of like the Star Trek like novels on tape in the van, along with like Wesley Willis and, you know, oh, you know like just Rocking insanity. McDonald's. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's what you're talking about. That exists. Yeah. They are on cassette. <laughs> 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 Somebody gets this oh, book and they open it up, put the tape in, and they're, they're hearing rock and roll McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Or hearing, or hearing, Savak took off his tunic. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, Rigel Nine. Uh, it, it just... <laughs> yeah. All right, so I've got a question for you guys. Yep. So I think we've we've gone through our lists here, and and we've had varying results. Do you guys do a lot of covers when you play? I. Do the giraffes play any covers? Did you used to? And, and Bass Robot Armies, you guys, I know you guys are, haven't had a chance to tour a ton because of the distance between everybody and the bands, but you guys. We don't play. Yeah. Let's just, just, just get it out there. We don't play. And John wants to kill me because of that. Yeah. Like, each, each record we make is better than the next. And it's like, they're always like, we should play this. And my answer, as terrible as this sounds, is like, okay. So you figure out a way that you're going to cover my flights to get to the States, book a couple days to rehearse, and then play a show to like 18 people. So somehow I'm not 1200 bucks in the hole. You know, if I didn't have a kid and if I was like in my – if I was 45, sure, I'm in. <laughs> but like it just – and, you know, I, I know it sounds super jaded, but – um yeah, so to answer your question about the covers, no, but my old band, sometimes why we always wanted to, but we kind of sucked. So we would try to like do stuff. Like we could do our own thing, but when we tried to do someone else's thing, we tried to do Number of the Beast. Oh, and wow. I was a singing drummer. So trying to drum and sing sucks right off the hop. And then trying to do Bruce Dickinson scream off the yeah, hop. Man. And then trying to figure out the drop beat that Clive Burr's doing in the verses. It's like, what? That oh, is man. a tall order. Yeah, and so we gave up on that, and then we also tried to do synchronicity, um, please. 
<laughs> which we yeah. kind of got a little closer on, but then it's just like, really? Am I really going to try to do this? You don't have to pick such difficult songs. I couldn't, but they're good I songs. <laughs> so it's like, I know, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, that's you Katie not Perry. any easier that's at all. No. Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to learn Xanadu by Rush. And it's oh, just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we gave up on that in Hemispheres instead. Have you guys heard about how all these bands want to do tributes for Neil Peart and yeah. none of them and they can, can't. They can't. Yeah. Yeah, like, they you can't. know, have you noticed that like when Bowie died, there was a ton of tributes yep. or now tributes. Nobody can fucking play rush. Nope. That and it bums me out. Cause I want to see some tributes, but I also know it's going to annoy me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not going to be good. Yeah. There's, yeah. It's, it's, you know, just, just, just leave it be. So do, yeah. the, do the drafts do any covers? Yeah, sure. We would throw covers in there every once in a while. But this is one of those things where it's like, you know, one man's easy is another man's fucking insane. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, like, there's there's uh, the guitarist of the drafts, Damien. He plays upside down and backwards because he learned the wrong way. So right. his low string is strung up high. So every he plays like Dick Dale or like Wink Ray, like those guys play upside down and backwards. Jimmy learned upside down and backwards, but wow. then Jimmy being Jimmy, he could just go, Oh wait, I'm supposed to flip everything backwards. Okay. No problem. And he just yeah. he adapted. So, um, anyway, as a result of this, we're like, Oh, okay, let's, let's cover. We wanted to cover a Devo song because it would, it was weird for a metal band to cover a Devo song. Right? Sure. So we're like, all right, let's see if we can cover Mongoloid. Right? Mongoloid is just basically like do 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 do. It's the simplest thing in the world. Right. Our shredmaster in general could not fucking figure that out. Oh my god. At all. I could play it for him, and he just couldn't. He's like, what? That? I mean, it's I. I just don't get it. It's like it's it's just sixteenths. Just sixteen notes. It's. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, playing simple is the hardest thing to do sometimes. I, yeah, you know, like everybody's got their everybody's got their thing. Yeah, yep. And yours, Damien's is is not Devo, apparently. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I, well, <laughs> guys, man, this has been a, a lot of fun. We and and I'm gonna applaud us for nobody picking Jimi Hendrix songs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That that was that would be the little, real but, hanging fruit. Speaking of sci-fi erotica, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room, which is Battlestar Galactica, which did use that Jimi Hendrix cover of the Bob Dylan song as a plot point because you know it is intergalactic and shit, I and it reawakens the sleeping and uh, sleeping androids. I'm totally like, missed this. Holy shit. No, yeah, did you, did you, yeah, because it's fucking awful. It's terrible <laughs> writing. That's why you forgot about it. Because it's one of the most boneheaded decisions by any script writer in the history of script writing. It was so pungently bad. I was just such a huge fan of that show. And I'm watching it and watching it. I was like, are they fucking playing Jimi Hendrix in space right now? <laughs> And they're going to pretend like it's like some fucking mystical, like, you know, from the ether song, yeah. some mystical truth. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. Like, it pissed me off so bad because it went from being an amazing show to just being. I'm out. And, it, yeah, it just went to being like just bad dad flute music. Oh, yeah. Like, instantly. Uh. So, oh, man. Well, guys. I, we've taken up a lot of your time tonight. I, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and, and talking. This is a subject my wife and I have, have talked about constantly. We, we do it all the time. And right. we always wanted to do a show like this. So I really wanted to thank you guys for agreeing to do it. And uh, where can people follow you guys on social media and find out when the giraffes are touring and when Vast Robot Armies is doing whatever they do? <laughs> You go ahead, Aaron. I'll, I'll oh, circle back. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so just look for the giraffes official, I think, on Instagram or just the giraffes.com. Giraffes are giraffing all over the place doing what we do. Um, I'm still waiting for you guys to come down to see you. Down my Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be playing a few shows and stuff like that. We'll nice. see. 
Yeah. Graphing. I like that. I like that <laughs> verb aspect of it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It could be dancing. It could be, it could be all a, a number of tasks. Who knows? I just, yeah. I, I, it's basically dying as slowly as possible. Um, <laughs> oh, so, so life. Yeah. Basically. basically yeah. I thought we were going back to something being slightly horny. But yeah. Maybe yeah, not. yeah. Yes, he had another bad company single. <laughs> Giraffing. Yeah. Yes. By bad company. Um, All right, Jason, what's going on with Vast Robot Armies? So Vast Robot Armies is gearing up to release our fourth record, March 31st. Um, our album Paper Crown Parade comes out. Um, we just signed a deal with a little boutique label called Dome Records, and we're getting it out on vinyl, which has always been a real... Uh, desire for me so i'm happy to get that done so we'll be releasing that um and we're working on a couple of videos right now and uh, i promised john that i'd look into doing shows and <laughs> you heard how far i'm going to go with that yeah <laughs> and you can find us on uh master of Armies at Bandcamp and the facebook chip page at this point in time that's awesome well you, everybody who's listening you can follow this show at performance annex on twitter and instagram Keep listening, subscribe, rate, review. You can send me money. Um, share the show because I'd like more subscribers, to be honest with you. You know, that's that's how you get uh, sponsors is to get more people listening. So hoping yeah. ha- having some awesome shows like this, some we, we brought the sex appeal in tonight. Bad company. We did. So yep. I think we're good. Let's put baklava in its place. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need more sci-fi food, yeah. sex crossover based That's right. podcasts. That's yes. a new genre yeah. right there. And everyone should go online and trash Battlestar Galactica immediately after this. Yeah, seriously, man. Yeah. We, we do it. And like, don't forget, after afterwards, you listen to the show, send us your ideas for cover songs that are better than the originals. You, you can tag or us. Or send us your covers of our songs that are better than ours. There you go. I want to hear that. I don't. I'm not gonna lie. I'd, love, I'd love to hear someone cover me. I know that's totally egomaniacal, but you know, I kind of want that. No, I freely admit I would love to hear that shit. All yeah. right, so let's get some giraffes and Vast Robot Armies covers. You fo- go follow them on Bandcamp, pick up their albums, learn the songs, cover them, and send them to us. All right, guys, thank you so much. All right.